Grab your Bibles and turn with us to John chapter 20, which is standing all over this building. John chapter 20. Let's house more floor. John chapter 20, verse 19. John chapter 20, verse 19. Grab your Bibles, physical or electronic. John chapter 20, verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, Sunday, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. This morning for the time that is ours to share, I want to talk from this subject, He's Alive. If you can shout that, shout, he's alive. he's alive. Type that in our comment section for those in our virtual sanctuary. He's alive. For our musicians, our praise team, our welcome team, our media team, would you shout glory? glory. Thank you for your service this morning. He's alive. One of the things that's most important for us to know and see, particularly in the Gospels, is the life of Jesus, emphasis on life. Jesus has a life before death, and Jesus has a life after death. Jesus has a life that he lived 33 years. For 30 of those years, we didn't hear much about him, didn't hear no miracles, no signs and wonders, Pretty sure when he was at home with his mama, he was walking on his bath water and, you know, he was turning orange juice in the wine in his sippy cup. But we don't have a record of that. But what we do know is the moment when Jesus came into his ministry, came into his ministry at 30 years old. And for three years, he taught his disciples, raised the dead, healed the sick made the blind to see, made the lame to walk. He, he did miracles, signs, and wonders. And in three years, he had built up enough enemies that they killed him. They crucified him because he came and he switched the system on them. He turned the tables on them and he became something that they didn't want him to be. A man that people listened to. The Roman rule and the oppressive hand of Herod and all of the emperors in that period, they didn't want another king. They had one. They had Caesar. Jesus would have been too much. Jesus being too much because Jesus wasn't going to act like Caesar. Wasn't going to wasn't going to treat the people like Caesar. Wasn't going to get them money in their coffers like Caesar. Jesus was for the people. And I'll say this to you and I'll keep going. When you are for the people, a lot of people will not be for you. I'm not going to get political, but you know how our country works. When we're just trying to hand out food or at least hand out water in the line for voting. It's a problem for some people. And this is not new that when you try to help the common man, the common person, folk in power have a problem with it. If anything, Jesus is the model for how we handle it. We press on and we keep going. And just like Jesus, we keep enduring until that day where the rubber meets the road on their side and ours. And something's got to happen. 
And for Jesus, that something was Calvary. It was the crucifix. It was his crucifixion. He died. Jesus did die. And on, the, on that Friday, he died. They whipped him. Y'all know the story. Y'all Baptists. He hung in high and stressed him wide. He died. But on the third day, somebody shout the third day. That Sunday morning, he got up early with all power in his hand. He is alive again. And unlike Buddha, people who serve Buddha and Zors and, and, and Muhammad, their saviors, their kings, their prophets are dead. Y'all came in here not to serve me or anybody here. Y'all came to serve the Holy Spirit and Jesus because he's alive. I take my time and say that because sometimes we, we kind of gloss over the fact that they killed him, but he's still alive. Docetists would have you to believe that he was a figment, that he, he just was just a figment of our imagination, never took physical form. The evidence would have you to believe that he was not even a prophet. He was, excuse me, he was just a prophet. That's all he was. He didn't have any saving power. He didn't have any Holy Spirit power. He didn't have any raising the dead power. They, there are many minds that think about who Jesus is. My question to you is, how do you think about him? And my hope today is I got one idea I want you to rest with for the rest of your life. He's alive. I could quit right there, but I can't, I'm not doing my job if I, if, I don't, if I don't keep going. But he's alive. And anytime you find yourself in, in, in tough situations, I just need you to write, he's alive. When every time you find yourself in pain and distress, I just need you to write, he's alive. Anytime you're going through your problems and its situations, I just need you to say, he's alive. When every time you're dealing with marriage problems or issues at the home, I just need you to say, he's alive. Struggles in your college room or with a college roommate or in college with your professor, just, just say, he's alive. Reading a book and you're tired of reading for biology, just write in the side of the margins, he's alive. Anytime you feel like your boss is pressing your button, is you ready to cuss him out? Just whisper under your breath, he's alive. Anytime somebody try to push your buttons, you reach into your pocket to pull something out that ain't a wallet, you just need to say, he's alive. Talk yourself into a frenzy. Talk yourself into a good space by saying, he's alive. I need you to get it. I need you to hear it. I need you to understand it. And the disciples needed to hear that. Now, I don't know when your encounter was or will be with Jesus. But I promise you, if you're looking for him, you'll find him. Let me say it this way to match our text. If you're looking for him, he'll find you. In our text this morning, we see that Jesus was killed on Calvary. He's dead. He's gone. And the disciples are in the upper room hiding from the Jews. The text is very clear. The door is locked. So they're not expecting anybody to come. Everybody in the room is supposed to be in the room, and everybody in the room is expected to be there. There are no other people in the room. And now Jesus sees this opportunity because he had already shown himself to Mary. He had already shown himself to those who came to embalm his body or clean his body or take care of his body that next morning or that Sunday morning. But guess what? He wasn't in the tomb. Jesus was alive, and when he saw his disciples in the upper room, afraid and scared and fearful and not knowing what to do next, he shows up. And that's good news for you and I, because when we find ourselves in this place of ambiguity, in this, this gray area, in a space of not knowing what to do, not knowing what to say, not knowing how to proceed, not knowing how the bills are going to get paid, not knowing how you're going to pay the tuition. When you find yourself in that place of, I don't know what's going to happen, Jesus shows up. I got some witnesses in here that he'll show up. 
He don't come late because he's always on time. He shows up for the disciples. And I want you to see this because he shows up for them and he will show up for you. What happens when he shows up? First, first concept I want you to understand. Remember this. When, when Jesus shows up, number one, he's going to insist his intrusion is not an irritation. First thing that he wants you to know is that he's not coming to cause problems. Jesus wants you to know, I ain't come here to mess up and cause no issues. I came here for peace. For verse 19 says, he says, peace be with you. Uh, we happen to get uh, YouTube TV. I actually got YouTube TV the other week for the Masters. Uh, I don't watch TV like that. I just wanted to watch golf, and so I'm going to cancel it in a, in a couple of days because uh, I don't want to watch TV. So while, while we got YouTube TV, you know, you got channels on there. You can watch all kinds of stuff. And last, uh, other night, last night, we was watching this paranormal thing where they were in an old prison and, you know, it was dark and it was night vision. And they were trying to record sounds and, and hear voices and stuff like that. And so I was like, oh, OK, y'all crazy enough to go somewhere where the ghosts are. OK, I understand. That's what you want to do. All right. Because you should have left them alone. They won't bother nobody when they was over there. <laughs> uh, but, but, but they walk in and y'all know. Anyway, uh, and, and they walk into the building and they get into the space and they got microphones and and they're scared. They are afraid. They went there looking for ghosts and scared that they found them. I ain't lying. They put it on TV. Got in there and recorded sounds and they're even putting, they're even putting uh, closed captioning with the ghosts are saying. Literally, they're sitting there and nobody's talking and all of a sudden it says, get out. And the people who produced it wrote that in the caption. Get out. So they're quoting ghosts. I ain't lying. It was on TV the other night. I, ain't to, I don't know what it, what, what it was. So now we're hearing these ghosts speak. They come and they're causing a chaos. They're causing scaredness to fall upon them. But Jesus doesn't come like that. When Jesus shows up, he don't bring problems with him. He brings peace with him. You can always tell the presence of Jesus. It comes with peace. If somebody's coming and raising sand, they ain't bring the spirit of Jesus with them. If you come in there loud and obnoxious, you didn't bring the spirit of Jesus with you. If you were the loudest thing in the room, you probably the lowest anointing in the room. The reason why Jesus comes the way he does is he's not trying to cause no irritation. He know you already tore up, jacked up, and messed up. Why he gonna come and throw some more hot sauce in that thing? So he comes in, even in your locked situations. Here I go, here I go, here it is. I feel it coming right up here. What have you tried to lock away from Jesus? What have you hidden from him? What are you suppressing in your spirit? What have you decided not to pron pronounce to him? What have you tried to hide away from the world? Jesus says, I'm coming in there. That, that thing that you're trying to hide, that thing that you're trying to keep under the wraps, the thing that you're trying to throw away, he says, I'm coming in there. He said, I ain't coming in the kitchen where it's all nice and good and neck bones and collard greens over there. No, I'm coming in that closet back there where you got that stuff that you don't want nobody to see. I ain't coming in no room where everybody else is. I'm coming where you are. And when he comes in, he's going to insist that his intrusion is not going to cause irritation. You know how you know he's there? He's there. It's the peace that comes. I tell this story. I don't know if I've ever told this before, um, but I'll tell it now. Um, I was in my last church. I was assaulted and I was punched and pushed in the sanctuary. In the back of the sanctuary, a young man just, you know, he's got this devil on him and he just had a little moment. And, uh, you know, I took karate. So I know how to fight. I mean, I got my belts, too. I'll show them to you, right? Listen to me. When he hit me, the training that I had to respond to bust him in the head didn't click in. I'm telling y'all the truth now. 
because I know how to fight. But what happened to me, a smile came over my face and peace covered me. He was hurting me, but I wasn't getting hurt. He was hitting me, but I wasn't being bruised. I'm going to catch somebody with my story in a minute. And in that moment, it took him by surprise that he was being chaotic, but I was being peaceful. Can I tell y'all the truth? When I left the church, I got mad. I can't lie to you. I got mad that the Holy Ghost held me back because I could have got him. I done got my belts and I know how to use my stuff. Ain't nobody had messed with me either. I know I've been ready for this. Anybody ever been ready for somebody to do something? I wish somebody would. Okay, oh, okay. This is a different church. Okay. Okay, all right. I was mad when I left, and what the Holy Spirit said to me was, here I am again. Because what I did was I kept you at peace in that moment because I came into your life to make sure that more chaos won't come in your life. And that's what Jesus will do for you. He'll slide in in that moment. He'll make sure that everything is peaceful when you're going through your storm. He says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. I don't need you to be afraid. I don't need you to be upset. I don't need you to be, be scared. I need you to be focused. I need you to be calm, cool, and collected. Because what I came for is to deal with the issue you're dealing with. So, Jesus comes in the room. And when Jesus comes in the room, this is the first time he's coming. And for the you Bible readers, you know Thomas is not there. That's the next part after 20, verse 23, 20, verse 24. The disciples are there and he comes and the first, the first thing he does was says peace be with you and then he does something different he shows them his scars first thing to know when he's alive is that he insists his intrusion is not irritating but number two he identifies himself by his injuries you will know that it's Jesus because you will see what Jesus looks like. I, I, don't, I don't think you'll get, you might get this and you might not get this, but I'm going to say it. In that moment when Jesus comes into your situation, something just proves in your spirit that it's Jesus. I don't know if you're going to get that, but some folk can testify. You, when that moment happened, you just know that it's the Lord. And if, you, if it ain't happened to you, just keep on living. What's going to happen is, is you're going to be in the midst of it, and all of a sudden you're going to feel something. You'll be like, ooh, that had to be the Holy Ghost. Am I lying, y'all? I'm, I'm, and I hope, I hope you get it, and I hope you, you find that moment, but it's going to be it's going to be very clear that this is Jesus right here with you. And for the disciples, what Jesus does is he identifies himself by his injuries. Now, here's what he does. He shows them nail prints in his hand, crown of thorns on his head that, that spots from the crown of thorns, the nail prints in his feet, and the piercing of his side. He shows that to the disciples. And what he's saying to them is, wow, he's saying, listen, I'm alive, watch this, and I'm whole. Okay, all right, I'm back, I'm back up. I don't understand, I hope y'all don't get, I hope y'all get this. It's one thing to be alive. It's another thing to be whole. Okay, all right. You don't like that one. Let me give you another one. I'm alive and whole, but I'm alive and healed. So what Jesus does is he shows up and says, here is what I went through. I'm done with that now. Holy Ghost, help me right here. And every now and then, you'll have some moments in your life where you can show people your scars. Your wounds. Why? Because you've been there. You've done that. You've conquered that cross. And now you're on to the next thing. Here are my scars. Why? Because I'm a survivor. You got scars on your body because you survived cancer. 
You got scars on your soul because you survived divorce. You got scars on your body because you survived that surgery. You survived some stuff in your life. And God says, show them your scars. Anytime somebody want to bother you, just show them your scars. Say, so listen, I done been here before. I cut the, I almost cut the last person, but I'm going to show you my scars so I don't cut you. Okay. Y'all mighty holy. He identifies himself by his scars. He said, listen, I've been there. I've done it. I've succeeded. I'm successfully cleared the cross. Done with that, and now there's more to do. I need to be in your situation. And when Jesus comes in your situation, you just gonna know. Because these disciples looked, and the Bible says in verse 20 that they were glad when they saw the Lord. He showed them, and they were glad. And he didn't say, It's me, Jesus. Watch this. He showed them the scars. Who do you know by their scars? Who can you identify simply by what they've been through? And at times in life, folk identify you by your scars. Come on in the room, come on in the room, come on in the room. Because some of y'all are scared of your scars. Some of you are ashamed of your scars. Some of you don't want people to know about your scars. But let me tell you something. It's all right for folk to see your scars. Oh, Lord, I feel it right here. Because every time they see you and your scars, you walk in and you are living testimony. You're a walking miracle. And if you want to know me by my scars, go ahead. Talk about me about my scars. But what you're really talking about is a healed person. A whole person, a saved person, a person who's created in his image and is full and complete. Scarred, but I'm saved. I'm scarred, but I'm whole. I got wounds, but I'm still able to worship him. Jesus says, here. See what I went through. Know that it's me. Shout, he's alive. he's alive. He insists that his intrusion is not irritating. He identifies himself by his injuries. Then thirdly, he informs them of their itinerary. In verse 21, Jesus, seeing them, said to them, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Now listen to me. I know you don't think you're a preacher or that you carry the gospel. I know you think you're not qualified to tell or show anybody about who Jesus is. I know, I know somebody even brought up Jesus in a conversation. You wouldn't say nothing. You would be quiet. You wouldn't tell them the church you went to or nothing. I see y'all quiet. See, I'm, I'm in the right spot. Yeah. It happens to us. And can I tell y'all the truth uh, while I'm up here telling the truth? If folk bring up church, I might not say nothing. Okay. I don't want them to know I'm a preacher. I don't want them to know a pastor. I get in those modes where I just want to be me. Walked into the store the other day. <clears throat> a young lady was like, oh, pastor, how you doing? How you doing? And I'm like, who is this? <laughs> hey, darling, how you doing? She identified me by my scars. <laughs> but even though you don't feel qualified, when Jesus shows himself to you, you're now certified. You ever bought a car and it's a certified used car? That means it's been through some tests, been through some stuff, been through some, some checklists. And the Lord show up at your house in your situation, you certified. Now, it, how much certification determines how many times he done been to your house? Because 
if you don't have but one story to tell, keep telling that one. That one time he saved you from such and such and so and so when so and so said something, something and somebody said something else and I ducked and I got through that. That's your one story. You tell it. And you keep telling it until you get another story. I'm trying to help somebody live today. You ain't got to go telling about how from Genesis to Revelation he, he's, all, he's alive and all. No, just tell them your story. Jesus said, I'm sending you like God sent me. And all Jesus did was tell his story, the story of the, the father who was in heaven. And that's all you've got to do. Whatever the Lord has done for you, tell it. Whatever the Lord has said through you, say it. Whatever the Lord has done for you, post it on Facebook. Stop cussing on Facebook. Start putting some Holy Ghost stuff on there. But whatever the Lord has done through and for you, go ahead and tell it. You got an itinerary. And you don't know when it's going to happen, but the moment is going to come where the Holy Spirit is going to tell you, you, you need to talk to them about me. You need to say something to them about me. Stop being scared about what Jesus has done for you. I'm going to preach again in a minute, but I'm going to talk for real right now. Here, look, I need you to stop being scared of what Jesus has done for you. I need you to stop being afraid of telling folk how the Lord brought you through. I need you to stop being afraid of telling folk how the Lord made a way out of no way. I need you to stop being afraid of trying of telling people that you are divorced and the Lord brought you through it. Stop being afraid of telling folk that you are, you did lose your parents and you said and you scarred from it and you can't get over it. Stop telling, start telling folk the stuff and stop keeping it inside. Somebody shout, tell my story. Talk to yourself. Say, tell my story. You're on assignment. When Jesus visits you, you're on assignment. You're on assignment. And y'all been watching TikTok. Do you understand the assignment? Hmm? You can't, don't be posting about understood the assignment. And you don't understand the assignment. If the Lord did something for you, tell it. That's the assignment. And if it ain't been but one thing, tell it again. Tell it today. Tell it tomorrow. Tell it to the same folk next week. Tell it, tell it, tell it, tell it, tell it. Just shout, I understand the assignment. He informs them of that itinerary. I'm, 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 I'm going to quit here. I'm going to quit here. He's alive. And he showed himself to his disciples who were despondent at the moment, who were scared of the Jews. And they were Jews too, but they were scared. What that meant was they were scared of the authorities there that had killed Jesus. He comes in and he insists that his intrusion does not cause irritation. He makes sure that he doesn't cause any problems. Number two. He identifies himself with his injuries. Make sure that they know it's really him. He'll prove himself to you when he shows up in your moment. He informs them of that itinerary. You got something to do. You got an assignment. I've come to your life. I've come to your house. I've come to your situation. Now tell the world what I've done. And lastly, he invites them to receive an indwelling. Verse 22 says, and when he said this, this is the good part, y'all. He breathed on them. And said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus breathes on his disciples and gives them the Holy Spirit. Similar to what, G what God did in the beginning in Genesis 2, chap chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God breathed into the nostrils of Adam and he became a living soul. The Ruha Hakadish, the breath of life, is what was breathed into Adam in the beginning. The same breath, Ruha. Everybody say Ruha. Ruha. Same spirit, same breath was breathed on the disciples. He then said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, which meant he didn't just. Force it on them. Come, 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 come here. 
Now, you were born without any say-so. You got here, and look at you now. You're here. Hey, how you doing? You didn't have no choice about that. But the Holy Spirit, when this next breath, oh, God. The first breath, you had to take it. But the second breath, you get to choose it. Just like being firstborn, you don't get to choose it, but being born again. And when you're born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. Some of y'all speak in tongues and some of y'all don't. Don't matter. When we get to heaven, everybody going to speak something. We're going to understand it. Don't matter what, how, how, how you're born again, long as you're born again. So the disciples had the choice. To receive the Holy Spirit or reject the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, y'all, think I'm, y'all think I ain't talking about y'all. Here I am. Because there are times in our lives when you can receive the Holy Spirit when the pressure is on you. When the, when the pain is heavy. When, when, when you, when you want to respond with some bad words. You got to learn how to receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, okay, I'll tell the truth. Every now and then, uh, th- not every now and then, there have been some times in my past, somebody say his past, because I ain't going to, y'all think I'm talking about now. Some folks said something to me and I said some stuff back to them. Somebody say in his past. Don't look at me like that through your mask. Don't look at me like that. Because some of y'all, they say something to you today, you're going to get them today. I ain't looking at nobody. You're saying the Lord's still working on me, right? Some of y'all, he look like he ain't even started yet. I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing. He invites them to receive the Holy Spirit. They're an indwelling. In my past, I, 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 I know, I, 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 yeah. They said it and I said it too. I said it better too. I said it with more syllables. I responded with more physical action. I'm going to tell the truth. Y'all lying, looking like you're lying right here. It's happened before. We all have human moments in our lives. Raise your hand if you're human in here. You better raise your hand. You all, we all done done something we shouldn't have done. Said something we shouldn't have said. Moved somewhere we shouldn't have moved. Did something we shouldn't have done. Matter of fact, some of y'all had that last night and you just in here getting over it. I understand. And when we did that, we did not receive the Holy Spirit. We rejected the Holy Spirit because we didn't act like God in the moment. But when you see Jesus alive, when your faith is strong enough to believe that I ain't got to cuss back when they cuss at me. I ain't got to jump back when they jump at me. I don't have to say nothing when they say something to me. I don't have to do anything when they do something to me. I don't have to try it because they handed it to me. I don't have to be it because they want me to be. When you get into that space and receive the Holy Spirit, you can be yourself and don't care about what nobody thinks. Receive the Holy Spirit. Here is how he's alive. I'm done. He's alive not in just the air. That's not how Jesus is alive. He ain't just floating around in here waiting to pop in somebody's life. You either walked in here with him or you left him at the house. He's somewhere you are or somewhere you've been. And I want you to know that the the Holy Spirit is something that lives inside of you. Now, 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 let let me help. I'm going to quit right here. Let me help some married folk today. Because I'm married and I understand. I'm married, married, y'all. I'm married. Happily. All right. But when what happens is sometimes you get in marriage and you want to say some stuff to your spouse. Okay, I'm too, I'm, I'm too tight for TV right here. Okay, all right. You want to say some stuff to your spouse, but you got to let the Holy Spirit cover you so that you don't say some stuff that will mess up what you got going on. Your spouse needs to see Holy Ghost. Your spouse needs to feel the Holy Ghost. 
And you need to get out of your own way and let the Holy Ghost have their way. Okay, all right, all right. That's, that's for the married folk. For your single folk, here I come, here I come, there I go. You need to understand something. You can't just move because your emotions are in it. You can't just respond because they text you at the right time and you're feeling vulnerable. You can't make you gotta make sure you don't let yourself get sucked into the game that he or she is playing, but you let the Holy Spirit guide you in, in your text message, in your talk, in your whole anything you're doing, you let the Holy Spirit guide you. For my young people. Don't allow them to tell you how to act. Don't allow them to tell you how to respond. Don't allow, don't, don't allow them to tell you the words you say. But feel that feeling that's inside of you that tells you, no, don't do that. Don't say that. Don't, don't be that. Don't hang with them. Let that whole, receive the Holy Spirit so that you can live a life where he's alive. He's alive. Because he's inside of you. He's alive because you're alive. Let Jesus live. Let him live in you. Let him live in your, your house. Let him live in your car. Let him live on your job. Let him live in your mind. Let him live in your soul. Let him live all over you. Let him live in your decisions. Let him live in your mouth. Let him live in your eyes. Let him live in your ears. Let him live in your hands. Let him live in your body. Let him live all over you. Let him live every single chance you get. He's alive. And he's more alive when you choose to receive the Holy Spirit. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head and for me he died. And I'm grateful to God that my Savior, your Savior, our Savior, whether you've accepted or not, he's still your Savior. Died on a cross. He died on a Friday. They whipped him all day and then he died. He stayed dead Friday night. I'm going somewhere. He was dead Saturday morning. He was dead Saturday at noon. He was dead Saturday evening. But early. Can I get real Baptist for you? But early Sunday morning. He got up with all power in his hand. And that same power that rested in him is the same power that rests in you. You've got power. Holy Ghost power. You've got power to overcome your fears. You've got power to overcome your problems. You've got power to make it through your storm. Power over death power over life power and victory you've got power touch yourself and say I've got power power on the inside power when I need it power when I gotta have it power Holy Ghost power it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. Power, 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 Holy Ghost power. Power in the morning, power in the midday, power in the evening, power anytime. You've got power, so he should live. He's alive. Because you got power. I know you don't think you got the power, but you've got it. It's in you, and it's ready for you to be received. If you receive this message, give God praise. Standing all over this place. Every head bow.
Jesus said to his disciples, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. In context, he's talking to his disciples who were fishermen. In essence, what Jesus was saying to them was, I'll let you use your skill, your talent, your acumen, your know-how about how to do this and apply it to a relationship with me. And all Jesus simply says to us that, that follow him is, use what we got for his glory and for more to follow him. I'd ask that you follow Jesus today. Following Jesus means you're giving your life to him. He's becoming your savior, your Lord. He's your shield. He's your sustainer. The Lord Jesus is our savior. And we follow Jesus so that we can live the life here that we can live there in eternity. If on today you want to give your life to Christ, type Jesus down in the comment section. And do me a favor, find our connection card and complete it. Just as simple as that. We'll send some information your way and we'll help you understand what it means to be in relationship with Christ. Follow Jesus as we are. If you're looking for a church home today, here is a place where you can grow in your faith. If you're looking to be a part of a faith community, a community of believers that, that strive to grow and learn and, and to be that which the Word of God calls us to be, well, look no further. Greater Fellowship is a church of choice. If today you're looking for a church home, type join down in the comment section and then find our connection card. Wherever you are, find our connection card complete that connection card and let's get the ball rolling on getting you some information about who we are to see if we're a good fit for your faith and your walk on this earth. Let's get some hallelujah hands in the comment sections for those that have made decisions on today. We are so grateful to God for those that are coming to Christ. All right, it's giving time. It's time for our offering. On the screen, you'll see some options that allow you to give. We are a tithe and an offering church. That's what we do. We give a tithe. What is a tithe? It is 10% of the 100% that God has put in our house. We take out 10%, we give it to God's church so that God's work can be done. We also give an offering. That is anything above and beyond. The offering is our choice. It's whatever amount we decide. But the tithe is non-negotiable. It's 10%. There are blessings tied into a tithe. In the passage of scripture that we looked at today in Malachi chapter 3, as you kind of move further in the chapter, he talks to those priests and says, are you robbing God of the tithe and offering? Because you know if you try God, he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour blessings down on you that guess what? You won't have room enough to receive. And if you need more blessings, that means you might need to pay more tithes. I'm not trying to scare you, and I'm not trying to shame you. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. So sow your tithe and your offering. There are four ways on the screen that will allow you to give your tithe and your offering. Find the way most suitable to you and sow it there. Let me say a prayer for your giving. Father, we thank you for those that are sowing on today. We also thank you, God, for those who don't have it, but want to sow. We pray, God, that you'll cover and keep us and multiply what's left in our house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. What a powerful word, girl, and a mm -hmm. wonderful re resurrection worship experience. Did Pastor Breach? Yes, he did. Yes, girl. he did. Blew my wig off. Girl, I'm trying to if, tell you. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's worship experience and you were blessed, yeah. we want to hear about it. Mm -hmm. I want you to type one thing. We're only asking for one thing that blessed you today in our worship experience. And that's right. And don't forget to share this worship experience. You can share this on social media. Tag a friend, tag a family member. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel under Greater Fellowship Church. 
We also want to remind you that you can worship right here with us at 2422 Ashley Road in Charlotte, North Carolina. Come on, we would love to see you. So family, Pastor Shears is coming back to give us our benediction. It has been an honor Wonderful. to host for you today and with you today. Um, we God. hope that you have an awesome week and we hope to see you next Sunday. Thank you for being with us on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. See you next Sunday. Well, can we get a round of applause for our hosts on today? Thank you, Sister Juanita and Sister Delina. You guys did an amazing job. All right. I send you love from above, and I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Would you lift your hands for the benediction? You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed coming. You are blessed going. You're blessed in any and everything that you do. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and until we meet again. Everybody said amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Happy Resurrection Sunday. We'll see you soon.